Welcome to my YouTube channel. In previous videos, I discussed a heavier duty version of a security system with 110 decibel siren horn and battery backup. Today I'll be discussing a light duty version of a security system with a 95 decibel bell and easier install, where the panel is simply placed over an outlet while the security system is powered by a 120 volt to 12 volt DC wall adapter plugged in to an enclosed outlet. Before the installation of a wireless security alarm system, I will be bench testing version 1 of the wireless security alarm system in a demo. Throughout the development of this security system, the bench power supply was critical for not only current readings in the circuit, since the bench power supply uses a linear regulator, while the DC wall adapter uses a switching regulator, the circuit behaved differently depending upon the power supply. When using a DC regulated wall adapter, there was no need for a test button since the security alarm system always initialized when powered up. When using a linear regulator, such as is the case with the heavier duty version of the security system, after power up, there is a need to press the test button to initialize the circuit. At the same time, the heavier duty security system was intended to remain powered up to maintain the battery backup. If you watched my previous security system videos, the sequence of events and key observations should be familiar Regarding version 1 of the wireless security alarm system as compared to later versions, since pin 7 of the QIE chip is on when any channel is on, I presume there was a diode protecting each channel output, and then later discovered the QIE chip channels cannot be wired together without adding a diode for each channel as shown in my updated wireless security alarm circuit video. As stated in that video, the numbers on the dip switches has an inverse correlation where switch 1 on the transmitter board correlates to switch 4 on the receiver board. In version 1 of this wireless security system, only one dip switch can be on in both the transmitter and receiver boards. At the same time, in most applications, this is not a major issue, since multiple transmitters can be on the same channel. Since this particular security board is used for hardwired and wireless, and as stated in a previous video, the QIE chip is screwed in the header. Since I am using this particular Genie board for only wireless, I decided to solder the QIE chip on the Genie board. The following is a readily available 7 inch by 9 inch project box. After removing the bell cover, the solenoid housing can be mounted through the four drilled holes with an additional drilled hole for the wiring. At the bottom of the project box, there are two holes for 12 volt automotive type switches, one for the sensor bypass and the other for the bell bypass. In the inside, I trace a standard outlet box and then use a drill and jigsaw to cut the outlet opening. I then mounted the wireless security system board for a wireless remote Genie board while also including a hardwired Genie board in the project box for another set of Genie sensors. While I had previously thought about purchasing a 3D printer to enclose the Genie board, since there was a time I was a lead electrician and utilized many electrical boxes, I knew there was a good chance I could find an electrical box with a cover that could enclose the Genie board. I found the one shown at a local home improvement store. To mount the Genie board, I used quarter inch foam containing double sided tape, and then for additional support, mounted the Genie board with screws. Other than wiring in the Genie sensors, and while a small 12 volt battery could be used, instead of every few months worrying about when it's time to replace the battery, I wired in a more durable 120 volt to 12 volt DC wall adapter. If you like this video, or just learned something in this video, please click like on the YouTube page below this video. Thank you.